Hi guys. So in the last lecture we talked about Gersonov's theorem and before we proceed today let's try to review uh, what we learned in the previous lecture. So we first said that we have a, a probability space given by our sample space, a sigma algebra and a probability measure P. Okay. Define on this probability space we have a Brownian motion given by WT and associated um, with this Brownian motion we have a filtration given by f of t. Okay. Further we said that we also have a adaptive process given by theta t. We then defined um, z uh, we then defined z of t as exponent function of minus integral 0 to t theta of u dw of u minus half integral 0 to t theta square u du okay and then we basically had another process given by w tilde of t that was equal to w of t plus integral 0 to t theta of u d of u okay we further said that let's assume that z is equal to the value of this process at time capital t Okay, z is equal to zt. Now, it might not be very clear from this notation, but this actually z depends on omega. Okay, so because we have uh, Ito's integral here, so the way it's going to work is we're going uh, to conduct an experiment, we're going to get some omega, and depending on what omega we get, we're going to get a path of a Brownian motion. Okay, and when we integrate that, we basically uh, come up with the Ito's integral. That basically is right here. And if we basically change omega, we'll get a different path of a Brownian motion and we'll get a different uh, Ito's integral right here. Hence, this variable z is basically dependent on omega. Okay? So even though we have not written z of omega, but it needs to be understood that this basically is a random variable. Okay? And it depends on the paths of the Brownian motion because we have a Ito's integral here. Okay? Then we said that because this is basically a exponential function, z, which is nothing but z of t, this is always going to be positive. So probability that z is greater than 0 is equal to 1. Okay. Secondly, the expected value of z under the actual probability measure was equal to 1. And this we showed by showing that this process basically is a martingale under the actual probability measure and that basically led to the result that e of z is equal to 1 okay and finally we said that we let's basically construct a new um, probability measure a probability measure is going to be given by p tilde and p tilde this probability measure basically assigns each set in our sigma algebra so for all sets belonging to a sigma algebra f this is going to assign a probability given by this formula z of omega dp of omega where z of omega is nothing but z of t okay and here we basically are writing omega explicitly just to uh, point out that this variable z basically depends on the outcome of the random experiment so it basically is a random variable okay so when we basically construct a um, uh, a, a probability measure using this formula then basically we said that under this probability measure this process is a Brownian motion okay therefore WT basically is Brownian motion okay and we basically uh, use Levy's uh, theorem to actually prove that the paths were continuous they basically start at zero it accumulates quadratic variation at one per unit time and basically this process is a martingale under this measure under this measure p tilde hence we said that this basically is a Brownian motion okay so this basically was what we discussed in the previous lecture now we're going to build upon this theory to come up with um, the black scholes formula okay so let's basically see how that is going to be done Okay guys, so now let's consider that 
our stock price is modeled as a generalized geometric ground in motion. So we already know what a generalized geometric ground in motion looks like. S of t is equal to S0 exponent of integral 0 to t sigma of s dw of s plus integral 0 to t alpha s minus half sigma square s ds. Okay, this is the generalized geometric ground in motion. And in differential terms, we've already seen what the, uh, the differential looks like. Differential is going to be given by ds of t is equal to alpha of t st dt plus sigma t st dw t. Okay, we've already looked at this differential in the previous lectures and this is our generalized geometric ground in motion. Here alpha t and sigma t basically are both adapted processes. Okay, now let's consider another interest, interest rate process which is also adapted. So we have another adapted process and this basically is an interest rate this basically is an interest rate process. Okay. Let's also further define a discount process which is given by d of t and this is going to be equal to exponent of minus integral 0 to t r of u du. This basically is called a discount process and it basically gives you the value of a present value of a dollar which basically is received sometime in the future at time t. Okay, so if you receive a dollar at time t, what is the present value of that? This equation basically gives the present value of a dollar received in the future at time t. Okay, now if basically we assume that x of t is equal to this particular integral right here minus integral 0 to t r of u d of u, then dx of t would be minus of r t dt, right? And dx of t times dx of t, which basically is a quadratic variation, would be this multiplied by itself, we'll get a dt dt term, and according to a multiplication table, that is equal to zero. So this basically process has zero quadratic variation. Even though it's random, because this is adapted, still the quadratic variation is zero, okay? Now, if I want to find the differential of this, I can use the Etos formula to do that. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function f of x is equal to e of x. If that's the case, then f dash of x is equal to f double dash of x is equal to e of x. Okay, and I can use the Etos formula to expand this. So I'll get d of dt is nothing but d of f of xt right because f of x is equal to e of x and this d u dt can be written as f of xt and this basically can be expanded as f dash of xt and d of xt plus half f double dash of xt dx times dx now dx dx we already know is zero so this term would go to zero we are left with this term. Let's basically write this f dash of x t. f dash of x is basically e of x. So this becomes e of x t. Okay. And dx of t is written right here. It's minus r t dt. Okay. Now e of x t. e of x t is nothing but dt. So this basically is written as, can be written as dt rt dt and this basically the left hand side was d of dt this is the first result we need to actually keep in mind okay that d of dt is equal to minus dt times rt dt okay hopefully this is clear now next what i would like to do is i would basically like to figure out what are the differential of discounted value of the stock price
So the basically the stock price is given by S of T and the discounted value of the stock price is going to be S of T times D of T. So let's find out what is the differential of this. <coughs> 